Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Space Between Podcast. I'm Renee Lipsmeyer. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment on these videos. Thanks again for watching. Hey guys, this is Renee with the Space Between Podcast. I'm Renee Lipsmeyer. We are here in Wilmington, North Carolina, which is just a short drive from where I took a break between... Um, tour date. So we were in Myrtle Beach for a couple days, so be sure to look for the Space Between podcast on Facebook. That's where you can follow all the fun things that we do in between these takes. If you're interested in watching dumbasses um, do dumb shit, right? Then watch us because we're a lot of fun, or at least I'm having a blast. So we're in Wilmington, North Carolina, where tonight is it's show day, but yet we are not at the show yet because we're celebrating a couple of fans. I guess, what would you call this? Like kind of a it's a celebration that they have been able to enjoy this many Dave Matthews band concerts we know that fans out there have are in the hundreds in the 200s in the 300s in the 400s but tonight we have a guy that this is his 500th show Mr. Josh Roberts but also we are celebrating Ridge Richter tonight is his 150th show and so we celebrate both of those guys because they love the band and that's what this podcast is about is the fans of the Dave Matthews band so we're going to take a couple of shots uh, see who's here and we'll interview a few fans from the celebration hey guys it's Renee again I've got a couple of fans that are here at our celebration right before Wilmington's top seven of the U.S. tour for the Dave Matthews band I'm going to let her tell us where she's from and what the Dave Matthews band means to her all right so I'm Melissa Schwartz originally from uh, down here from Raleigh originally from California uh, down here for Wilmington and for Charleston and I'll be in Alpharetta and Dave has saved my life. I don't know how many times. Saw them the first time in 2001. Was gifted a pit ticket for the L.A. show uh, when Macy Gray opened for them. And uh, yes, yeah. yes. And that was the very first time I saw them live, and I've been hooked ever since. Absolutely. With a show like that, how could you not? Because it would just make you want to come back anyways. Like, be like, what the fuck are they gonna do next, right? right? But the problem was being on the West Coast. I didn't see them a whole lot. So, so I moved out here in 2000, about the same time, 2001, and then got to know them on, up and down the coast here, and and just been following them ever since. Love it. What's really cool is when I can turn my students on to Dave Matthews so because I'm a counselor. I'm a counselor. So I have one of my, my students actually sent me a friend request. He's like, Do you, you don't remember me, but I graduated in 2012. You got me turned on to Dave Matthews Band, and my mother and I are going to Charleston for night one and two and hope to see you there. And I'm like, well, gee, there you go. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. It was fun. That was really cool. Very weird, weird, but cool. Yeah. So tell me, any request tonight, if you could ask Dave, like, for one request, what, what can you narrow that down and what would it be, if, top five? Drunken Soldier. Okay. Um, gosh. Um, um, yeah, Drunken Soldier. Yeah. I'd, be, I'd be good with that. I think the whole fan base would be really good with that, right? Oh, yeah. Can you imagine just the, the noise that would yeah. be yeah. all over the social media pages if we get Drunken Soldier? Oh, yeah. Well, it'll be interesting because it's, I mean, first time venue yeah. and yeah. and for them. And it's going to be interesting to hear, you know, what the sight line is going to be, the sound, the everything. All right. Um, but, you know, hey, we're all here in this beautiful North Carolina weather. You can't beat it. No, I'm so happy it's not hot today. We have got just the best weather, the best weather. So, again, if you're listening to this on the podcast, you can watch this on YouTube and get to see Melissa's face and all of the wonderful things, all of the wonderful fans that are here to see the Dave Matthews Band. So, again, if you're listening to this on the podcast, be sure to tune in to the Space Between podcast on YouTube and you can see everything. Again, be sure to follow us on all the socials. Melissa, thank you so much thank for being so on our so show. Ah, <laughs> this is what it's all about, guys. This is what it's all about right here. Just get people <laughs> connecting over, like, just things in common, right? Yep, Th- passions that are the we're same. All, we're all family here. That's all it is. That's And I love it. Oh, it was good to meet you. Absolutely.
Hey guys, this is Renee from the Space Between Podcast. I'm Renee Lipsmeyer. I am in Wilmington, North Carolina here for day two of Stop 7 in the United States Dave Matthews Band Tour. And I've got a couple of fans with me here who have interesting stories. And that's what this podcast is all about, are the fans of the Dave Matthews Band. So I have Johnny and Ben here, and I'm going to let them take over and tell us a little bit how they started as fans and kind of worked their way up to do a little bit more to be closer to the band experience. And suddenly it's now Johnny and Benny. The Johnny and Ben Show. Hi, guys. Hi, Renee. Thanks for having us on this lovely podcast of yours. Um, just how we started off, um, I've been a fan since, I mean, I've been in eight, I was in eighth grade, the first time I ever heard a Dave Matthews Band song, and the obsession began. Um, I'm not a big numbers guy, all these people, big numbers, I want to go to this 500 show, of, you know, it's not about numbers to me. Uh, this is 162. It's been a fun ride um, here in Wilmington with Ben, uh, Ben's wife, Danielle. It's great to be here with fans, friendly, awesome time in Wilmington. Yeah. Well Go. said. Well said. Uh, for me, sort of the same kind of story. Um, I began this long journey. I look today 26 years ago. Um, I won't say when I started. That will date me. Um, but it uh, was 26 years ago, and really what got me intrigued was a uh, young lady that I was seeing at the time was a big fiddler, and she thought it was really crazy that there was a violin in a rock band and insisted that we went and saw them, and I was mortified to go do this. And I just remember walking in and hearing them and being like, it was in a small little uh, frat house, and I just remember looking around, and everybody was talking and carrying on, and nobody was really watching, and I thought, how are they not listening to these guys? This is incredible. And from there, it was just, I think I went beyond that. I think that might have been the last time she went, and uh, luckily, and you know, <laughs> a, a breakup didn't ruin anything for me, so... Um, but yeah, ever since then, I think I'm at 130 something shows now, and uh, I've you know been all over the United States and and doing it. And uh, for me, it, joining the DMB family and being admins on that um, really kind of tied it all together for me. Is I had I felt like I had a little bit of information that I could share with people, and whether it be what is it like in pit. Do, does everybody like lawn? How, what's the easiest way to get tickets? You know, just simple things we take for granted now because we have all these answers. But for people yeah. that are trying to start out, I feel like it can be a really big anxiety experience because they don't know all the answers and everybody is so knowledgeable because they followed the bands for years that now we could kind of give tips and information and be a platform that people could share all their stories and tips and information so exactly i don't consider ben and i any by any means experts to the dmb family you want me to hold the microphone I, I, yeah i, I can do go, that you go. uh i don't consider myself a dave matthews band expert by no means but i mean together um ben and i and our other admins let's give them shout outs vicky carrie nico Kristen, fabio ben well, you're already here, yeah. um, and, Johnny, and don't Johnny. Johnny too, yeah, and Johnny. Matt, Matt, Matt Clark, and uh, Peter Ferraro. I mean, we collectively, I mean, together, I'd say we're in Josh Roberts' category, possibly 500 shows. Yeah. Um, but we we all bring our own little expertise to it. Um, I'm big into the posters, so it's any questions about posters generally are directed my direction. Um, ben, again, pit experience. I'm not a big pit guy. I don't like sitting in the or standing in the pit, standing in the pit. Um, but you know, the Dave Matthews Band family, Renee, you're a part of it. Um, we are a collective group of th close to now almost 40,000 people. Second biggest, second largest fan group of Dave Matthews fans. Where everybody loves this band. Everybody has their reasons for loving this band. We're a platform where I want you to. Sh show that fire dancer you saw in the mall parking lot or driving on the highway or you know your fan experience um you have done a great job collectively of your photos and your experiences on this tour so keep sharing those pictures um share the music uh share the love of the band and that's all we ask yeah 
So what are you what are you most excited about for night two of Wilmington? And then are y'all headed to Charleston? I am not headed to Charleston right now, but Ben is eagerly sticking a knife in my back and pointing me in the right direction, so possibly. <laughs> um, but we are definitely, I'm excited tonight. Um, not saying I saw a spoiler set list from last night, but Ants was crossed off. Ants always gets me in the mood, um, but I mean, that would hopefully be a encore. Um, but then, hey, Dave talk, let's go. Fans, fans. So, um, but tonight, um, you know, the ending of Lion Our Graves was a little bit, you know, to some people, oh, it didn't end the way it always ends. Get ready for night two, Wilmington. Uh, Wilmington's been a, uh, just to recap my experience here, it's been fun. I've gotten to hang out with some family, and I've gotten to hang out with some DMB family. Um, so it's going to be, tonight's going to be a great night. I think, I think the band was just warming up last night. Um, yeah, night two, I think we're getting into, uh, this is the first two-nighter. So this really is sort of uncharted waters for this year. So the first two-nighter is always interesting of how the band will navigate through it. You got an album year. You're not trying to stick all the new songs into one night. Now you're spreading it out over two. What else are they going to pull out? So I think we had two or three liberations last night, which was nice. Um, that seek up last night. Yeah, and... 18-something minutes. I, yeah. Yeah. The, these great. are what we keep coming back for, is little, little little treats like this. So tonight, what will we get? Who knows? Uh, I expect a few more liberations, probably a couple more new jams off of the new album. Um, but yeah, uh, running into a, a bunch of people that, since there was no big Virginia shows and no big you know uh, amphitheater shows in North Carolina this was it for that area so you're cramming thousands of fans into 7,000 arena and so the energy is really good in there I thought the I, vibe was awesome yeah I, I thought I thought the feel in there was great I thought the staff was excellent there they were super nice um, and so it was really fun and uh, I'm, I'm excited for a few yeah. few little treats tonight as well awesome. Yeah. So last thing, if someone's watching and they've never really gotten into the Dave Matthews Band, kind of explain what it is to you and how how you would introduce a new fan to the Dave Matthews Band. Which, do you want? You're, you're gonna make ahead. me go first. <laughs> wow. Okay. In 2023, so not in 1991. Yeah. 2023, who the Dave Matthews Band is. Okay. Who is DMB in 2023? Um. Yeah, I think Not really. Your grandmother's Dave Matthews Band. Yeah, but but they they've Dave mellowed. Matthews, you, Dave, Dave Matthews Band has mellowed drastically. Yeah, but as as any person who's been doing this for 20, 30 years, I'm not as sharp as I was in my early years. Mm. I'm dating myself now, yeah. um, but it's they, they they keep the ground going they keep the energy going D dave loves the crowd just as much as you know i think your wife's texting no that's another no but she's like wrap it up no but it's just a matter of this band is still doing something they have had passion for doing for 30 plus years and that's what makes me as a fan happy and get go it's it's still positive it's still friendly we just met yesterday uh officially but we've been communicating on facebook for months but it's a matter of this band is doing things right um it's a good experience you 2023 day matthews band you'll still have the experiences i had when i first started learning of this band Go. thanks for holding the microphone by the way anything for you, know. you anything buddy um here i'll hold it for you on this oh one. my god <laughs> let's do it all that right way. um for me johnny um it would be they're kind of like your favorite old pair of pants you know like you put them on it, that band is now just settled in they're comfortable they they've they've I perfected like their edges and they've they've sanded them down a little bit they've gotten into the groove they're just comfy now you know they're 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 not singing these drug soaked you know songs and and jamming out for hours they're singing about things that is important to 
middle-aged men with kids you know they're singing about where our world is going and where our future is and how we're going to protect kids and things like that and you know it's something I can relate to you know so as I've grown up with them they've grown up and now we're kind of we're kind of uh, simpatico we're kind of moving along the same way in life and you know I I think anybody who joins them now I think they're going to appreciate the message the same way it's a different message they're pushing um even though back in the day they were always we got to protect the world and we've got to do things the right way now it's more of a poignant message that they're pushing and i i appreciate that as a dad and everything else and how i've gotten older and my ideals and ways of thinking have changed and i kind of feel the band has too and they've kind of settled into a groove of where they like to be and it's one of those bands that it is. It's like a, a nice, warm, your favorite pair of pants, man. Like, no matter what, you're always wanting to put them on because they just feel good and it's comfortable and I it's familiar, it's you amazing. know? <laughs> they're, they're, they're like my family now up there, you know? They're, they're singing something that I've been Tears around for years, in my eyes. you know? Yeah. Remember you heard this first on The Space Between. That was fucking awesome. <laughs> it's, yeah. Uh, yeah. Let's make a t-shirt of that. Like they're a, like your favorite pair of pants. Yeah, maybe that's it. <laughs> Quote, Ben Crowley, (laughs) Wilmington, night two, 2023. I love it. Let's do it. I'm making this, yeah, definitely. All right, guys, thank you so much. Definitely, thank you so much. Just let's give it up for the D&B family. Woo, woo, and give it up to you for doing this. Thank you for No, great, uh, awesome podcast. And getting everybody's views. I think think some people like to hear our views sometimes, some some not. But, (laughs) you know, it's out there, and I think you're doing a good thing. Getting the fans' a perspective, I think that it's a great story. It's great to, to hear everybody else's no, I, reasoning I, of why they do this crazy stuff that we do every tour. So. Yeah, if you're not listening to this podcast, something's wrong with you. Yes, <laughs> I agree. Something's wrong. Some, agree. Something is wrong with me, though. That's why I'm doing the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said it. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, no, thank you. It's yeah. been great. Right. Cheers. Thank Let, you. Let's go get a beer. Hey guys, so this is a different way to come to you guys at the end of a show, but I'm on my way to Charleston and so it was either like parking lot, car, whatever. So my crew has kind of split up a little bit. We're all going in different directions. Christine had to go back to Idaho because she's a hoe. That's what we've been saying the whole weekend. Karen, um, who's also been with me since Arkansas, is headed to Charleston but in a different car and so I've met up with my friends um, and so we are on our way to Charleston so we're just gonna do a little post show review of Wilmington of course it was the first time for the band to play there and what they said had been like 20 years or something but I don't believe they'd ever played at the venue um, like it is now it's a, a reinvented space it looks a lot like a park um So if you've never been to Wilmington, which most people haven't, because again, this was their first time. We've got some fans, some fans loading up in their car next to me. We're doing a caravan to Charleston. So it definitely was a park vibe. Um, It was like being in the middle of, I don't know, just like a city park. Everything was flat. So the lawn is flat in Wilmington, which I heard negative and positive things about both. Um, a lot of people did have trouble seeing because in most lawn spaces there's an elevation or at least some hills so that you can see you know over the crowd if you're in the back of the lawn Um, that was not the case here in Wilmington Um, it really was just kind of surrounded by a lot of condos townhomes businesses restaurants so a a city vibe for sure Um, but also it's the smallest venue so far on the US tour that we have seen So it maxes out at about 7,500 capacity. Um, So it's a very small venue, smaller than Arkansas, which was a surprise for me because of course being from there, our max is somewhere between 10 and 12. I can't remember exactly. So for this one to be a 7,500 max, um, it's a small venue, but I can't imagine them fitting more people in there because of the way that it's laid out. Um, Would I come back to Wilmington? I felt like the set list was worth being here. The people were worth being here. The venue, 
just my personal opinion, not my favorite. And that's okay. I wasn't here for the venue. I was here for the band and I was here for, um, for the fans of the band, right? So the venue is not everything, but it's not my favorite. And that's my opinion and it's okay to, to have that. So let's talk about the set lists. So because my editor is amazing, he has night one and night two up for us so we can see the comparisons. We got a lot of wonderful songs, but I would say that no matter what they sang, because that's the way I feel about everything they sing. So we had a lot of tour debuts, which we knew that we would have. Um, just having a two night stretch, that just means that you're gonna get more um, because you're here for longer, right? So this was the first time I believe that Stay or Leave was ever an opener. Um, so night one, he opened up with Stay or Leave, which honestly, I like that song a lot, but it's not been done as an opener. Um, and so then funny the way it is, Seek Up. Um, Seek Up, one of my best memories, uh, that particular night I got to be in the pit. Um, and I'm such a nerd when it comes to these songs. I'm the girl that times the seek ups. And so for someone else to go, I wonder how long it's gonna be and kind of took bets around like, what What do you think, what do you think? My guess was 17 minutes and it was 18 minutes. So we got an 18 minute seek up and it was fabulous. So if you haven't had a chance to listen to night one of Wilmington, definitely check that out. Then it went from seek up to um, Mad Men's Eyes, When the World Ends, Satellite, Typical Situation. So Typical Situation was the song that um, was the gateway for me into the Dave Matthews Band. I think it's such an amazing song. Um, I remember falling in love with the band through this song. Um, so to hear it was just, it was special for me. Uh, Break Free was next. And of course, if you follow me, you know that that's my, that's my jam. I can't do anything. I got the tattoo right here. I got a new tattoo. I look like a fucking mess, but I got a new tattoo, so I'll show that to you later. Um, break free, it could happen, lie in our graves. Mary, I'm sorry, I keep getting lie in our graves. It's like the one song that Bob wants to hear and he can't fucking get it, and I've gotten it like so many times, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, Crash into me, don't drink the water, Virginia in the rain, what would you say? Never would I have imagined that what would you say would be one of my favorite songs of the night, but it fucking was because the way they did it. It's, and that's what keeps me coming back to this band. You can hear a song over and over and over, and then one day you hear it and it's completely different, or maybe it just like resonates differently in your head that day. But that night, what would you say won it for me? And that's my opinion, but I fucking loved it that night. You and me, always the sweet, water into wine. That was special and like, I loved every bit of it. Um, and then went into the warehouse. We haven't gotten a warehouse with the woos yet on this tour. So I hope that I get to be present when we break out the woos for the first time. If not, just know that I'm going to be salty as shit. <laughs> I'm just joking, but I am excited for whoever gets the woos first. So shout out to the band. Can we get some woos with the warehouse? I would love that. But if not, that's cool too. I love it anyways. Okay. So then of course we uh, take a break. And then we come back for um, looking for a vein in Gray Street. Again, Gray Street is, a, it's everybody's favorite, right? Like, we love it. Yes, it's played a lot, but I love it. And here's why. The very end of that song, we'll say verse three for conversation's sake. When he says, she feels like kicking out all the windows and setting fire to this life. Um, she would change everything about her using colors, bold and bright. If that doesn't speak to you, like it speaks to me because I'm that gal that decided, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to change my life. I'm in my forties, but I don't give a fuck. I'm not too old to do whatever it is that I want to do. And so here we go and I'm changing my life and I'm doing all this crazy shit and I'm having a blast. And so when I hear Gray Street and I hear that verse where she's just like kicking out all the windows and setting fire to this life. Yes, I hear it. I hear it. And that's, that's everything to me right now. So night one, super successful. Night two um, was the bomb as well. And I just dated myself saying the bomb, but I don't give a fuck. Okay, so night two, Bismarck opener. So we've seen that a couple times, um, but we love it, right? Then pig, always, always fun, sweet, um, and squirm. And while I have read the lyrics to squirm and and my vote is, this is not about sex, obviously. It's about like making someone 
read the lyrics, read the lyrics, find out what Squirm is about. But no matter what, I think it's the way that it's done, like musically, is so fucking sexy. I love that song. I love that song. Walk Around the Moon. Louisiana Bayou, and I know that was going straight to um, Suzanne's world. She loves that fucking song, so that was straight to you. I know we FaceTimed uh, her when um, Louisiana Bayou came on because I know she loves it so much. Um, Grace is gone. Crush. Now, I circled Crush because Crush is just one of those songs, right? It is... Uh, it's the moment where the Fonz gets to come out and like the spotlights on him and he gets to just play that bass and like all eyes are on him, which typically, you know, on stage people watch him, but he's not like the highlight. He doesn't have the, the lights on him where it's just like, look at him, see what he can do. And always crush is just such a great way to highlight his talents. And so it was an extended version. They did a great job of highlighting each person's talents in the band. And so Crush was definitely one of my favorites for night two. And then I Want You, which is a cover by the Beatles. Um, sexy as fuck. So be sure to listen to that. Um, after everything, PNP &P and Rapunzel, um, The Ocean and the Butterfly, and then number 27. I saw so many people lose their shit over number 27. It was beautifully done. And I was so glad that I got to hear that. Dancing Nancy's All You Wanted Was Tomorrow, Monsters, Kill the Preacher Man, Into Why I Am, Jimmy Thing, Brick House, which we've heard many times this tour, but every time it's it's fabulous. I love it. I love the energy that comes along with it. I like to watch people sing because everyone knows those words. And then it's just a fun, sexy song, right? Um, Something to Tell My Baby and Ants Marching was the closer for Wilmington. So as you can tell, I've lost my voice but I'm still having a blast chasing my dreams. Um, again, if you don't know my story, I'm a nurse that decided to take a year off to kind of find myself and what made me happy. And what makes me happy is chasing this band, but more importantly, like talking to the fans of this band and like seeing what your story is. So far, I've got to see people get engaged, people that are on their baby moons, people that are, um, you know, just doing life like all of us and we've all got shit at home we've all got things we've all got work we've all got kids we've all got our spouses we've all got shit but when we get together and we do Dave Matthews band together we're family right we're just family and it's wonderful and all of those things that you don't want to think about are gone and so it's just two to three hours or a day depending on how you do it just filled of love and friendship and family and so that's why I continue to chase this band. That's why I'm losing my voice, but I'm so happy. <laughs> I'm so happy. I feel amazing. Um, so we're on our way to Charleston. Um, we've got some really special interviews that I got to do in Wilmington, and I know that those are all part of this video. So I'm just so thankful to everyone that has been willing to share their story, to share their views, to share their likes, their dislikes, um, what makes them tick, and how they found this band. Because... I love your story. And if you have an amazing story that you want to share with me, be sure to look me up on all the socials. Again, if you're listening to this on a podcast, you can watch it. I don't know why you would want to, but you can watch it. <laughs> you can watch all of this on YouTube under the Space Between podcast with Renee Lipsmeyer. So be sure to check that out. And be sure to share this with any Dave Matthews Band fans that you may know. Um, I hope that everyone gets to watch Charleston. We're so excited. Of course, this will be on XM Radio Friday night. So we've got two more nights here in South Carolina. And then I'm going to take a little break until Deer Creek. So, guys, thank you again for watching. I appreciate all the love and support. You guys are amazing. Peace, love, and day.